Though we've only physically tested two of the Roborock robot vacuum versions, the S50 and the E25, after doing some additional research, I finally feel like I can explain the differences with the entire Roborock lineup, while also explaining the somewhat confusing model number system. So links in the description to every vacuum I'll mention, and let's get started. So let's begin with a broad overview of the different model numbers. First, we have the C10, which is the cheapest Roborock, and as far as I know, the only Roborock in the C1 series. Next up, the price point lab is the E2 series, also called the Roborock Shawa. It comes in two different colors. The E25 is the model number for the gray one, and the white one is called the E20. The E3 series, or Shawa Plus E3, is a beefed up version of the E2 series, and as of the creation of this video in early 2019, it has not yet been released in the U.S., but it is scheduled for later this year. Next is the Xiaomi Mi robot vacuum, sometimes referred to as the first generation. This model was released before the name Roborock was widely used. It was the top of the line Roborock vacuum until the next one on the list came out. Finally, the Roborock S5 series, which is the top of the line Roborock. It comes in different colors with different model numbers. The white one, often referred to as the S50, though technically it's the S501-01. The white one with rose gold trim is the S51, and the black one is the S55. Though I find many companies refer to all of these by either S5 or S50 at different times. You can easily tell the difference between the first generation and the S5 series by the placement of the laser. The new version has the laser more towards the center, and the first generation has it toward the back of the unit. Before we get to the differences, I'll quickly point out what they all have in common. They all have the exact same cleaning mechanics, meaning they have the same self-adjusting brush roll housing and use the same anti-tangle brush roll. They also have one side brush. In fact, all the Roborock consumable parts like brushes are interchangeable. They're all Wi-Fi enabled robots compatible with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. They all utilize the downloadable app where you can schedule cleaning, see reports, change between one of the four power settings, and even use it like a remote control car. There are some features in the app that are different as well, but we'll come to that later. They all have a basic set of sensors like cliff detection so they don't fall downstairs, and even the cheapest Roborocks have obstacle sensors that slow the robot down before bumping into things. Finally, they all return to the base automatically to charge after finishing their job, and they all have HEPA filters. Moving on to the differences. The main difference is the way they navigate to clean your home. The C10, the budget version, is the only random navigation robot in Roborock's lineup. So much like the cheaper robot vacuums, it randomly bounces around to clean. Though for a random bot, it has a pretty sophisticated algorithm, incorporating various modes into its random cleaning that make it more efficient than a standard robot vacuum. The E2 and E3 series are smart navigation robot vacuums, meaning they clean in straight lines while systematically incorporating edge cleaning, which makes them far more efficient than random bots, and it saves a lot of battery life too. Though unlike the Xiaomi Mi and the S5, which use lasers to implement smart navigation, the E2 and E3 series use a gyroscope and the so-called electric eye to accomplish similar results. And I have to say, after testing both the E25 and the S50, as far as navigation efficiency, it was really hard to tell the difference. The Xiaomi Mi first generation and the S5 both use a spinning invisible laser to map out your home, and other than the placement of the laser, very little is different, though I have seen some tests that show that the newer S5 is more efficient in terms of cleaning time. Related to navigation, there's the virtual barrier and zone clean features. After the robot has mapped out your house, you can use the app and draw various lines and boxes anywhere you don't want the robot vacuum to go. We're huge proponents of this feature on robot vacuums, and it's the only sure way to make sure your robot never gets stuck on cords or anything else in your home that robot vacuums will inevitably have issues with. Currently, only the S5 series has this feature. It's also the only one with the zone clean feature, where you can create a box or several boxes on the map if you only wanted the robot to clean a certain area or a certain room. This could also be useful for the mopping feature. Speaking of the mopping feature, the E2, E3, and S5 are the only robot Rock vacuums that have it, and it works the exact same on all three. They come with a mopping attachment that snaps on the bottom of the vacuum. You fill it with water, and the water very slowly trickles into the mopping pad, though only when it's in motion. It's also able to operate as a dry vacuum at the same time. In my opinion, the S5 is the only Roborock where the mop is really useful, at least if you have a mix of hard floors and carpets in your home, because with the S5 you can use the zone clean feature in combination with the invisible barriers to make sure it only mops hard floors, whereas with the E2 and E3 they would try to mop the carpeted areas as well, unless you were able to babysit it or block off the carpet by other means. Another difference is with the power. 
As I mentioned, they all have four power settings, which are referred to as quiet, balanced, turbo, and max mode, though the actual output on each mode is different. Roborock uses suction in pascals to measure this, and the numbers they give are 1600 for the C10, 1800 for the E2 and Xiaomi Mi, and 2000 for the E3 and S5. Though I should mention that airflow is a much more important metric than suction for robot vacuums, and in our test we found that the E2 was almost identical in airflow to the E25. Though the S5 was more powerful, it was pretty minor. Another key difference is battery life. I couldn't find official numbers for the C10, but I'm fairly confident it can get 60 to 80 minutes on low power. The E2 series jumps up to 100 minutes on low, and we tested it at about 55 minutes on max. The S3, Xiaomi Mi and the S5 all have the same battery and can get a whopping two and a half hours on low power and 110 minutes on high power. And in case you're wondering, the low power tests on the S5 were amazing. And I see no reason to use it on high power unless you want to deep clean carpets. On that point, there's also a feature on the app where you can use it in low power until it detects carpet and then it will automatically switch to max power. I can confirm this feature on the C10, S2, S3, and S5, but I still need confirmation it's on the first generation as well. For dustbin size, the C10 and S2 actually have pretty large dustbins at around 640 milliliters, where the first gen and the S5 have smaller dustbins at 420 and 480 respectively. This is probably due to the battery being larger on the laser bots, and so there was less available space for the dustbin. I really love the Roborock brand. I think they make amazing robot vacuums, and the S5 competes easily for one of the best robot vacuums on the market, period. Links in the description for current prices, as well as links to our reviews of the E25 and S5 on the screen. Consider a like if this video helps you out, or even better, a subscription to Vacuum Wars. New videos every Tuesday and Friday, and thanks for watching.